from the Department of Communication in Phillipsburg. This is a special edition of Inside Government with Cedric Peterson. To our audience here at home and around the world, you are now Inside Government. And as you've been following our series, we're talking about Public Service Center celebrating their 10th anniversary. And of course, the departments that participate in service to you, the people of this country, we venture into the Civil Registry Department. And our guest in this edition is none other than Acting Head Back Office Civil Registry. We got Miss Denise Williams Warner. Denise, it's great to have you back in the program. How are you? I'm fine, Cedric, and I'm happy to be here. It's always a pleasure to have you. The last time you and I got a chance to sit down and talk about services rendered in civil registry was back in 2018, 2019. So it's great to have you back, and especially now that uh, PSC is celebrating their 10th anniversary of public service, uh, service to the people of this country, and your department playing an active role in that. It's great to have a refresher conversation in regard to all the services that um, your department renders. I want to start off first and foremost. How much years of service have you um, dedicated to the people of this country? Wow, Cedric. It <laughs> has been a time, huh? So it's 22 years I have committed myself to giving service to the general public of St. Martin. And it has been a roller coaster. Yeah. There has been great times. You learn quite a lot when you give service to persons based on the different laws that are attached and has to be carried out. Mm -hmm. But it can be challenging. There has been challenges where you give service to persons and give the right service to persons, but the expectations can be a different outcome. Sometimes persons are not really happy or pleased with the outcome, but it, it is what it is because that is the outcome by law. Yeah. But you do get persons who are, absolutely happy that they have ha they have finally have a solution or there is a solution to whatever issues that they may have. So 22 years of service has been for me, uh, I will not say a joyride, but I would say very challenging and very learning within the government apparatus and especially within civil registry. Well, we're totally grateful for the service that you have rendered to the people of this country. It's highly commended. I want to give you the opportunity now, of course, in this interview to be able to remind the public because we use this as an information and a training session to get people um, further acclimated to how the services are rendered and what the rules and regulations are. And the civil registry, especially in our previous interview, we considered it cradle to the grave because all of those different steps in life is covered by the civil registry, starting with birth. Let's get right into it. The birth process, when a new life is uh, uh, entering into St. Martin, the first thing is birth registration and the birth certificate. Explain that whole procedure. How does it work? So someone, a child is born. Right. When that child is born, the medical center gives a declaration that a child was born within the medical center. Or it can happen that that child was born at home. It's possible then you would have the, the midwife or one of the doctors go to the home and supervise that process. And so they will come with a declaration. That declaration, the person who was present at the birth has to come to register that child or that birth. So it can be, if there is a father, it can be the father of the child, it can be the mother, or it can be anyone else who were present, a doctor. It can be a nurse. It can be the neighbor. It can be a child who is present. The law states anyone who was present at the time of the birth. So what that means is that someone who was not present but was next door listening cannot come to register that birth. So with the declaration and identification, the person can come to the civil registry and we can make, or better said by law, draw up a document which is called the birth certificate. Once the information is recorded based on the declaration and based together with the information from the person who is present to register the child, a birth certificate is made, the civil registrar signs, 
and that person who has come to declare that fact also has to shine. Acknowledgements, because I, I kind of sense now the process of the birth taking place, and it can happen in one of two forms, um, within marriage and outside of marriage. I remember having this conversation with you in the past. Remind us how does the differentiation between those two um, as it relates to birth and acknowledgements. All right. So a couple who is married cannot do a acknowledgement process because once you are married, that child will bond within marriage. We call that bond within law, so a lawful child. Acknowledgement process is simply when a woman who is pregnant at the time is not married, and then that process can take place. Oftentimes we have couples who would come by and they would say they come to do the acknowledgement process. So we have to explain how it works by law. During the acknowledgement process, the law states that the father, the acknowledger, must be present. The mother can give permission, written permission. But then we have an additional factor, which is the name change. So that has, over the years, from 2000, when we went in 2010, when we went country status, that factor came into play where persons can choose the name of the child. Prior, before 2010, a child is born, a child is acknowledged, the child gets the family name of the father by acknowledgement. If there is no father and that mother is the only one that's recorded on the certificate, then the child gets the mother's name. After 101010 or as per 101010, October of 101010, it's possible that Persons can choose the name. So with that, there is a choice of either having the father's name, a combination of both parents' names. So it can be the father's first and the mother's second. And when I say father, I mean in law terms, traditional terms, the acknowledger. Or it can even be that the mother's name is first and the father's name is second. So they can change it around as per their wish. The only thing that I must make mention is that if there is a second child within the family, then it means that we would be consistent. So if the first child has that first name, let's say, of the father, then with a second and third child, consistency prevails, meaning that child will that second child and that third child will also get that name as minors. Okay. How does information exchange work between the medical center and the civil registry as it relates to births? Absolutely great. We have a great relationship with the medical center, and what we do is that we have constant contact with them on a daily basis. We, based on our On the civil registry right now, we are working via appointment. So we have all services that are done via appointment. But because of the need to record every single birth that has taken place on St. Martin, and that information is needed for statistical data that can be shared with the community or other governmental departments, we have that great contact with the medical center whereby every birth that takes place, they inform us. At the end of the month, they give us a schedule or actually a list of all the births that has taken place for the month so that we can verify that every birth was recorded. And if there's need for additional appointments, then they also communicate with us so that we can arrange that for the parents. Having a conversation with acting head of the back office at the Civil Registry of St. Martin, Ms. Denise Williams-Warner. Stay with us. My conversation with Denise as it relates to registrations and so many more services offered at CBR coming up right after the break. You're inside government.
car theft. What thieves want are your vehicle parts and items of value. Here are some tips to keep in mind when parking and exiting your vehicle. Never leave valuables in your car, especially if they can be seen from outside your car. Close and lock all windows and doors when you park. Be sure to take your vehicle's key with you and do not leave it in your vehicle. And for added protection, invest in anti-theft systems and devices designed to make vehicles more difficult to steal or easier to trace and recover in the event of theft. If your car is stolen, contact the police immediately by calling 911 or 542-2222 or send email to info at policesxm.sx. Let's work together to reduce and prevent car theft in our community. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Police Force of St. Martin and the Department of Communication. Hi everyone, if you're just tuning in, I'm having a conversation with section head and sometimes acting head of the back office of the Civil Registry, Miss Denise Williams Warner. We're talking about service to you, the people of St. Martin, as it relates to services offered by the Civil Registry. We started off talking about birth and we want to continue down that line as it relates to uh, how the birth process uh, takes place and working with the Civil Registry. How does the information that you'd left off talking about that you gather from the St. Martin Medical Center um, work when it comes to statistics. Explain that process. All right, so <clears throat> that information is used for recording the um, data, and that data is important for a lot of persons. Different departments ask for data on um, the amount of births that took place for the year, uh, and that information is used for different reasons, different purposes. Uh, the statistical department can ask for that. Um, medical department can ask for that. The Department of Health can ask for that. And also private entities or other private departments within the community. So the importance of the, the data is that every single birth must be recorded. That gives us also an accurate register and that is important because no birth at any time that has taken place during the year should not be recorded at the civil registry after all that birth took place in st martin dutch st martin and it's of vital importance that that is recorded denise i heard the expression pre-acknowledgement define that for us pre-acknowledgement means that at the time a woman is pregnant, acknowledgement can take place based on our law. And it's called in Dutch, ongeboden vrucht. Erkenning van ongeboden vrucht. It's a very important process, and it's possible out there for, again, mothers, women who are not married at the time that they are pregnant, and that that process can take place. And what happens is that we're recording the acknowledgement factor. So the child isn't born as yet. That mother is still pregnant. Coming to do that process means that we're recording the fact that that child at the time of the birth will born with, the fa with a father and will have the family name that the parents have chosen at the time. So what still needs to take place after pre-acknowledgement is the birth, of course. And once the birth is recorded or the birth has taken place, it can be recorded, and then you have the sex of the child, the first names of the child, the time of the birth, the parent's name, etc. But important factor is that at the time of the pre-acknowledgement, the family name of the child, and parents' information that there is a father is uh, recorded. Gotcha. Let's get into registration. Why is registration important to the basic administration? Explain that to us. Civil registry has a population registry. 
And it's important that every single person who are residing on St. Martin is registered legally and, of course, in the correct manner. With the information from the population registry, the basic administration, as we call it, the information that is recorded there is very vital because it gives the amount of persons that are registered on St. Martin, that St. Martin. So persons who are in St. Martin or on St. Martin, it's important that they do the proper steps and register. The law states that once you have deregistered from a country and you are coming to live in St. Martin, you should, you have five days, within five days, you should be registered. You have, you have that obligation to register yourself in the registry. And so when persons don't do that, then it, of course, brings a lot of things forward. They cannot get a registration form. They cannot make an ID card. They cannot get medical insurance and et cetera, and et cetera. So you see the importance of not only coming to St. Martin to live, but ensuring that whatever situation your situation is, whether you need a resident permit at immigration, whether you're a Dutch national coming from one Dutch island or part of the Dutch kingdom, mm -hmm. that you register once you have arrived in St. Martin. So it's making sure that um, it's clear that you're, when you're traveling within the kingdom of the Netherlands, registering um, from one country to the next, and that leads into the question of signing out. Right. Um, so explain that procedure because that is something that happens, especially when our children transition from St. Martin to the Netherlands to go to school. Um, that's at least from the young person's perspective, that they sign out and then they sign in when they go to the Netherlands. Explain that process and why that's important. Right. So, before we go to sign out and sign in, the importance of persons who are within the kingdom mm -hmm. is that we all use the same basic administration. So, you cannot be registered in St. Martin, but also registered in the Netherlands, or registered in Curaçao, or registered in Sabre. If you have decided to leave St. Martin, and migrate to one of the other countries within the kingdom, you have that obligation to deregister so that you can re-register or register within one of the countries of the kingdom. So the importance there is that deregistering is one of the factors that takes place. The law states that if you are not residing here within two-thirds of a half year, so meaning for the, if you are not living here within with three months consecutively, then you, this is not your place of domicile, as we would say. This is not the place that you live. This is not your residence. This is not where you sleep at night. So you need to deregister based on our laws so that you have the opportunity to register in the country within the kingdom where you are going to live or reside. And, this, and then this gives accurate information, not only for our basic administration, but also for the administration, basic administration, where you are also going to live. So you, you should not be registered here and registered over in any of the other countries within the kingdom. That gives for dual registration, mm -hmm. and that, that also gives for inaccurateness of the factors or the facts of the amount of persons that are registered. Mm -hmm. So... It's important that persons conclude or come to the conclusion that when they are leaving from one place to go to another, you have to deregister. And this greatly impacts how you gain access to services when you go to this other country because the country does the verification process, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. They do check to see if you have registered out of the country. How does one get impacted if they don't register uh, or deregister from St. Martin going into the Netherlands and trying to gain services there, what would happen? Very simple. And indeed, we do have that request all the time. And vice versa, we ask 
for their assistance exactly. uh, uh, likewise. If persons are still registered in St. Martin and they have gone to the Netherlands to live, they definitely cannot get registered. So they must deregister in order for them to follow the process there in the Netherlands. It's as simple as that. Once you are leaving, deregister so that once you arrive in the Netherlands or any of the countries of the kingdom, you can then register. Section head of bank office at the Civil Registry, Ms. Denise Williams-Warner. Our conversation with Denise continues right after the break. Stay with us. During the hurricane season, a potential tropical cyclone can produce rainfall that can cause flash flooding and rock falls. Stay away from flood-prone areas during heavy rainfall, such as Jump Up Casino on Emma Plain Road in Phillipsburg, A.T. Illich Road Roundabout, L.B. Scott Road from Emilio Wilson Park until Cake House Supermarket, Zaker's Gut from Petro Plus Gas Station until the Seventh Day Adventist Church, Welkalakin Road, K. Hill from Welkalakin Road Roundabout until the One Tete Loke Roundabout, Beacon Hill Road from Sunset Bar and Grill until the beginning of White Sands Road and Rhine Road, also known as Mullet Bay Road, after Sonesto Maho Beach Hotel to the entrance of Cooper Coy from the intersection of the University Drive until the intersection of Rio Grande. For more information on how you can keep yourself and your family safe this hurricane season, visit stmartingov.org forward slash hurricane. This public service announcement is brought to you by the government of St. Martin. The Ombudsman. The Ombudsman is here for you. The Ombudsman. We're here for you. The Ombudsman. We're here for you. The Ombudsman is here for you. The Ombudsman. We're here for you. The Ombudsman. We're here for you. Good governance is a must. This institution you can't trust. Guardian of the Constitution. Not one but more solutions for complaints against the government. Protectors of the citizens promoting good governance in our friendly island St. Martin. The Ombudsman is here for you. The Ombudsman, we're here for you. The Ombudsman, we're here for you. The Ombudsman is the voice and protector of the people. Visit us at E. Camille Richardson Street, number 13, on the police station road in Phillipsburg. Hello, everyone. If you're just joining us, I'm having an insightful conversation and, of course, a refresher conversation with Ms. Denise Williams-Warner. She's the section head back office at the Civil Registry Department under the Ministry of General Affairs. And, Denise, so much information because there's so much to cover when it comes to services. Let's get right into uh, continuing with registration. When it comes to affidavit, that's a term that comes up from time to time. Define, what is an affidavit? Um, An affidavit is actually a document that you can use stating that you have sworn that the information in that document is true and correct. And this is critical. And given on the oath. Okay. And this is critical, especially when it comes to the registration process um, as it plays out. And one of the other key terms that comes up is an apostille stamp. I want to get into that as well because that also played out in the process of registration. What is it and how does one go about getting one? An apostille stamp is a stamp that verifies that the document that it that that apostille stamp is attached to is a legal document and issued from the authority who is authorized to do such. What is an apostille? An apostille is a stamp that has started from 1962 where they joined the convention. Before the apostille, person is needed to, for the legalization, and that's what it is, they needed to have the stamps from the stamp from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Dutch Embassy. Over the years, the apostille has, for the countries who have joined the convention, they no longer need the stamps from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Dutch Embassy, but it has been replaced by the apostille stamp. So if you are going to a country who is 
part of the convention, who have joined the convention of the apostille, then you would need to get the legal the legalization, which is which it is, which is the apostille stamp from civil registry, and then you take that to the respective country where you're going to use that document. When it comes to minors, um, explain how the registration process applies to them. Registration for minors are basically the same as it is for adults. You would need to deregister if you're coming from a country within the kingdom or if you're coming from any other country where you may need a resident paper and so forth. Once you have gone to immigration and done that work, the parents, of course, when I say it, once you have gone, because as a minor, a minor is considered within our law from zero to 17. If you are 18 and older, but based on our law, you are considered an adult to handle your own affairs. So a minor within those years, the parents would have to do that process for them. And once they have come to the civil registry, they would have to be accompanied by an adult. A minor cannot come to the civil registry to do business, to ask for a document because they are minor. So they must be accompanied by their respective parents or guardians or whomever they are in the care of. And with that authorization from those persons, with the minor present, because the minor must be present, every single person who comes to register at the civil registry must be present. That includes the minor. And once they have all the requirements, the necessary documents, then the process is done of registering. Let's get in quickly into marriage. What is the procedure a couple should note in preparation for marriage in St. Martin? Oh, marriage, a wonderful thing. <laughs> so we started by birth, and now we're at the marriage start. start. Uh, marriage, both persons must be present. At the moment, we ask for a list of requirements to, for persons to be married. So you must have your birth certificate. You must prove that you have a single status, or in, your, in some person's case, they might be divorced or they may be a widow, widower. All of that information is vital because you can't come to get married and it's not clear what your status is. I don't think anywhere in the world that's possible. So once they have those documentation and the given the status of the person on the island, they may have to go to the immigration department to do a D-79 interview and that can be because they either have a status, a legal status of residency, or it may, they may not have a residency at the moment. In those cases, they would have to go to, em, to the immigration on an interview. And with that document, along with all the other documents, they can come and start the process for marriage. If it's two persons who are Dutch national, then they would not need to do that interview. They can come directly to us, make an appointment, and then we can start the process of marriage. We see marriages take place on a regular basis at the government administration building by the civil registry. Can marriages be conducted um, by the civil registry, but outside of the civil registry's department or outside the government administration building? Indeed, marriages can take place at the stipulated governmental location, which is a marriage hall at the civil, re at civil registry or the government, new government building. But it can also take place away from the marriage hall. So any location on Dutch St. Martin, we cannot venture on French St. Martin because that's a different territory and there's different laws that is attached. But persons can get married at home, at a restaurant, on the beach, between two sidewalks, it's up to them. Their location, we come to, and we can perform that marriage as long as it's on the Dutch side of St. Martin. What is the cost to get married? It can be anywhere between 315 guilders for persons who are both registered uh, legally on the island and want to do it at a marriage hall. But we can look at 
Saturdays. We have marriages also. Of course, it's weekend and our offices are open from Monday to Friday. So, of course, it's a little bit more. It can be 350, uh, sorry, 550 in Gilders. And we, I can go on to say that if it's to tourists, then it can be 735 Gilders if they're going to do it away from the marriage hall at any location on the island. Now, the, the aspect that we never want anything to happen to anyone who's gotten married, but it, you know, sometimes it comes up, and that's divorce. It's unfortunate mm-hmm. that um, couples have to break up. Explain the process and how that's handled um, at the civil registry. Well, I'm so happy that you asked that question. Divorces need to be recorded, period. Oftentimes, persons after marriage get divorced, and the permission is given at the court, but it doesn't stop there. You have to come to the civil registry so that we can record that fact and actually make a document, which is called the divorce document. So if persons do not come to register that document within six months, then I'm afraid that they are still very, very married. So I urge everyone, once you have gone to court and you have made that decision and the court has given permission, don't forget to come to the civil registry and register your divorce. But the court decisions are not only from divorces. In general, there is much more that happens within decisions from the court. At civil registry, we have the registers of births, deaths, marriages, deaths. And so with these documents, the court can give permission for corrections on any of these documents. When persons go to court because they may want to change their name, their first names, they may want to change on the the document that already exists, maybe the place of birth or maybe their date of birth or year of birth, that's possible. Once the court has given permission for these corrections, then persons need to come to the office so that we can add that to that existing documents and make that correction. So that is also important in terms of court decisions. Denise, we're out of time, and I really wanted to get in to talk about the subject that you brought up, which was deaths, but we'll do that in a, in a subsequent interview. But I'll give you this opportunity to provide final words to the public of St. Martin as it relates directly to, the, to your discipline at Civil Registry. I urge everyone to make use of our appointment system, the cumatic system. It's important that once you are coming for a service, you use that opportunity to make an appointment. And by any chance, if you have decided that you cannot make it to the the appointment, call. Let us know because we're open and we can change that date for you. I would also like to ask persons to... We make use of our our email. Um, it's Burkerzaken at Burkerzaken St. Martin at St. Martin Gov dot org. We can answer any questions that you have. We can send information to you, and we can actually give you advice on how the process works. Our telephone number is five four two zero six five two, and we are also available to answer any questions or calls or direct you to any of the services within our back office that is possible, back and front office, that is necessary for persons to know. So once again, thank you for having me. I hope that persons have taken note of the information that I've given and that it's clear. And if it's not clear, feel free always to call or email us. We look forward to your emails or your calls. Section Head of Back Office at the Civil Registry of St. Martin, Mrs. Denise Williams-Warner. Denise, thank you so much for being once again in the Inside Government Program. And to our radio listeners, television viewers, and online viewers, thank you for tuning in and being a part of this conversation with Mrs. Williams-Warner. If you've missed it, be sure to catch video on demand at the official Facebook page at the Government of St. Martin, facebook.com forward slash sxmgov. Subscribe to the YouTube channel of the Government of St. Martin at youtube.com at Government of St. Martin. And for audio playback, be sure to tune in throughout the course of the day to St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9 FM. 
On behalf of my colleagues down at the Civil Registry Department under the Ministry of General Affairs and all of us here at the Department of Communication, I'm Cedric Peterson. Thanks so much for tuning in.